An incredible UFO photo was released on August 12th. Let's get into the story a bit before I share it with you. 32 years ago, two young hotel chefs drove about 13 miles north along the A9 to Calvin, Scotland, a spot on the edge of the Cairngorms for a walk in the hills. They subsequently saw a huge, solid, diamond-shaped object about 100 feet long hovering silently in the sky above them. They felt terrified and hid in some bushes, looking up at the strange object. At one point, the two men pointed their camera at the object from where they were hiding and took six photos of the object. Subsequently, according to them, the object shot vertically upward and disappeared far up into the sky. The two men took their photos to the Daily Record, but they never printed it. The paper sent the pictures to the Ministry of Defense. After that, the six photos vanished as well as the two young chefs. However, with the fine work of David Clark and others, this picture has finally been found and published. From the article titled, Revealed After 32 Years, the top secret picture one MOD insider calls the most spectacular UFO photo ever captured. So why do officials want to keep the identities of the men who took it secret for another 50 years? It's a picture the MOD and the National Archives have tried their utmost to keep hidden. While the information would normally have been released after 30 years, the ministry has not released the original photo and wants the names of the witnesses sealed for a further 54 years until 2076 because of privacy concerns. Later in the article, as a university lecturer and investigative reporter, and I believe this is referring to David Clark, who spent three decades immersed in the world of ufology, I heard the story of the mysterious Calvin file as the missing photo and report of that incident at Calvin came to be known many moons ago and have devoted the past 13 years doggedly searching for the images that the men took. What happened to the file, the men who pictured the UFO, and how and why its very existence has been suppressed for 32 years was a puzzle I was determined to crack. Wherever I searched for answers, however, I found insiders blocking my inquiries until I struck lucky and found retired RAF officer Craig Lindsay, the first official to speak to one of the young chefs after that night. He was willing to talk to me, and most exciting of all, I discovered that he'd broken protocol, protocol that day and stashed a copy of the image before, on Whitehall's orders, sending the entire dossier, negatives included, to the Ministry of Defense in London. Incredible journalistic work, congratulations. And here is the photo. And here is the photo, and as you can see, the diamond-shaped object, it's not a blurry blob. It's not ambiguous. It's very clear that this is a diamond-shaped object and appears to be fairly large in size and appears to be airborne. And so this is why many people assess this as one of the best UAP photos ever taken. And I do think this photo challenges the idea that there are no good photographs of UAP because this one has not been debunked. It has been taken extremely serious by the Ministry of Defense, and it is a genuine unknown that appears to be technological in nature. In a bit, we'll explore some of the debunking arguments, but for now, let me give you my assessment of the potential significance of this photograph. Well, I don't think it's a smoking gun. So my analysis is going to be opinion. It hasn't, this photo hasn't proven anything. But I, I assess that the object in the picture is not a hoax. And the reason I don't think it's a hoax is because this photograph has been looked at by many, many experts inside the uh, Ministry of Defense as well as outside. And I've, I've gone over some of these analyses, and I haven't come across anyone that assesses this as likely a hoax. In fact, it's the opposite. They assess it's likely not a hoax. Further, the two young gentlemen that took 
this photo, they actually took six photographs. The one that has been released, as I understand it, is the highest quality one. So the MOD has been able to examine all six of them. And for whatever reason, they have deemed that they did not want to release this photo. This photo is now, as I understand it, 32 years old. They were supposed to release it within 30 years. Further, they have decided to keep the identities of those that took the photos secret for another 54 years until 27, 2076. Why do they care who took the photos? And then when we look at the witness testimony, that adds further weight to my assessment that there is a good chance that what was photographed in this photo is a truly anomalous technology. When the two gentlemen saw the object, they got very frightened, according to their testimony, and they sort of retreated into some bushes. And, and, and so what would cause that kind of emotional reaction? I don't know. I, I guess it's possible something prosaic could, but that seems a little bit over the top. They said that the object was hovering when they saw it and that it was a solid object. Now, there are some people who have been hypothesizing that it might be some sort of blimp, if you will. I've never seen a blimp in that shape. I don't think anyone has demonstrated a blimp in a diamond shape. Of course, it could be some secret military airship that is shaped like a diamond that has never been publicly revealed. That's always a, a possibility. But beyond that, the witnesses said that the object looked solid. So there wasn't the impression that it was like made out of material that a blimp is made out of. And that demonstrates if their rendition is accurate, which it might be, that this is fulfilling one of the five observables, which is positive lift with no discernible, discernible means of propulsion. In other words, something moving that slowly in the sky and there's no obvious or discernible means of propulsion, it should not be able to stay aloft. It should not be capable of remaining airborne, if you will. And then the witnesses said that shortly after they took their photographs, the thing um, zipped up into the sky at extremely high velocity. That would also uh, fall under one of the five observables, which would be instantaneous acceleration. So... These are some of the reasons I personally lean toward the assessment that this is a legitimate photo of an unexplained technology. This is from an aerospace engineer, so I think it's worth sharing his analysis of the Calvine UAP photo. He writes, my thoughts. The diamond shape isn't surprising. Diamonds were popular for stealth in the 1980s. Lockheed and Northrop both designed flew diamond prototypes. But the eyewitness accounts of hover and fast vertical acceleration make this an anomalous sighting. UFO Titan chimes in responding to Condorman, the aerospace engineer. In terms of flying a prototype in a foreign country, out in the open, and relatively close to the ground, would there be a precedent for that in your opinion? Condorman responds, nope. Even transporting it there would, would have been tough with all the secrecy involved. If it was a U.S. plane, it had to be an operational craft based there. If it was a prototype, it was likely a BAE design based on US diamond tech that was transferred, or maybe an original UK design. Now, as far as the debunking goes, there's been a lot of interesting explanations as to what the photograph may be displaying beyond some exotic technology. Uh, on August 12th, Mick West chimes in. The original Calvine photograph, quote unquote, showing the diamond shaped craft and a Harrier aircraft in what appears to be close proximity appears as key. There's always the SFA aspect. Perhaps it's a rather drab kite. The original description had it hovering. Some of the other ideas that debunkers have provided as a possibility to what this diamond-shaped object could be, and by the way, I support the process of bringing these ideas to the table and examining whether or not they are a likely fit for this photograph. But some of the other ideas were, it could have been an advertisement banner uh, that, a that a plane was dragging behind its tail. 
I had a friend of mine tell me that in the moorlands of Scotland, that's very unlikely in contrast to something like a beach environment. Another idea that has been presented by debunkers is that it could be an island. And what you're really seeing is the island as the upper diamond and the lower diamond that's attached to the upper diamond, if you will, or the half other half of the diamond is merely the reflection. I'm not real compelled by that explanation, but you never know. And so those have been some of the two other prominent rebuttals to it being an actual technological craft that I've heard. And as always, we should always take those rebuttals into consideration when trying to come up with the best assessment. Here's an interesting tweet that I came across from Raymond Noodle. He writes, straight from Mr. Pope's mouth, anyone who thinks the Calvine UFO was faked in any way, there you go. Nick Pope was part of the Ministry of Defense and Nick Pope wrote, thank you for your email. While I see the similarity, the images and the negatives were examined at the time by intelligence community imagery analyst experts who were able to use a variety of techniques to determine that the photos were not faked in any way and that they did indeed show a large unidentified craft and not a small object close to the camera. I hope this is helpful. You are free to use and publish the above quotation. Best wishes, Nick Pope. Vinnie Adams of Disclosure Team, who's highly connected with the release of this photo, wrote, Nick is correct on this one. The images were analyzed by both DI-55 and JARIC. Both concluded the images were not fake hoaxed. It should be noted that the negatives of these photographs have been examined by the Ministry of Defense. There's pedigree, there's chain of custody. This is not your average run-of-the-mill UFO photo. This exceeds that by a long margin. In the coming weeks, there will be a lot of scrutiny on this photograph. As a friend was telling me, he thinks a lot of experts all over the place are really going to dig into this photograph. And, and, and we'll have a much clearer picture how viable some of the debunking options really are. And he thinks that this may be a way by proxy, if you will, for the Ministry of Defense to enter the disclosure conversation. And he might be right about that. And he said that you can't judge the impact of this photo a day or two later. It's going to take a little while to see the degree to which this photo impacts the conversation on the question of what are UAP, how valid is their existence, what does it actually mean that these technologies exist. So it should be interesting to see how this photograph potentially impacts the conversation and the process that I believe we are all going through right now. I suspect there will be many more surprises for the year 2022. Please do not forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my merch shop where I sell t-shirts. You can become a patron. You can become a YouTube member. You can even give me a one-time donation. All of those possibilities are in the links below. Or you could slap a like on this bad boy. And I'll appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Special thanks to all patrons, YouTube members, those that have bought merch, those that have given me a one-time donation. I couldn't do without you. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.